faculty uh, graduate of University of Santo Tomas, Faculty of Medicine and Surgery, but 2006. She took her residency training in Dr. Medicine at St. Luke's uh, Medical Center, Kepler City, Philippines. She consistently passed in Yokular Medicine Residency in Service exam during her residency and had multiple awards in her college medicine and residency period. She had observership training in gallium, PET, and uh, the tissue FMA prostate therapy at Singapore General Hospital in 2018. Currently a consultant in nuclear medicine and PET CT at National City and Transplant Institute, FMC Philippines, and a VTP consultant for radioactive iodine and tissue therapy at the global To talk about the evolution of PET CT, imaging for prostate PA, coding to KSMA, let's hear from Dr. Gomez. Good morning. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Isinias. And I would also like to thank the organizers for the invite. I am excited and honored to be part of this conference and represent nuclear medicine. This is my disclosure. Uh, we use F18 PSMA PET at NKTI, and I also joined St. Luke's for Lutetium. Dr. Patrick Walsh said in his lecture about 12 years ago that the discovery that would have the greatest impact on our field will be the development of accurate imaging of tumor within the prostate. This is actually an overview slide of my lecture. You can see coronal slices. On the left is um, FDG PET of a patient. And one year after, Fcoline PET was done. And another patient on the right, uh, FDG was, was um, a patient underwent FDG as initial, uh, as actually a screening, not known prostate cancer presenting with a, with a left lateral neck mass. And after two years after treatment, PSMA PET was done. I don't have a patient who had undergone all three different types of PET. So I would like to start discussing on PET and the various tracers of PET, and then move on with um, caveat of tumor heterogeneity and theranostics, lutetium, and just about three slides of what the future may bring, a uh, future contribution of nuclear medicine for prostate cancer. So positron emission tomography, or PET, is always in conjunction lately with anatomic imaging, whether it's CT or MRI. PET CT is available in the Philippines, PET MRI else, uh, abroad. The different methods of PET are dependent on the choice of the tracer, as well as the target processes, the biologic processes, whether it would be a metabolism, cellular proliferation, or receptor binding. And with this, there is a move towards personalized medicine, giving the right treatment for the right amount, right time to the right patient. It gives insights to tumor biology as well. Fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG PET has limitations in the early detection of prostate cancer. Why? Because it has a prostate cancer in normal and small growing prostate cancer cells exhibit weak glucose metabolism. Therefore, we cannot really differentiate the prostate cancer cells from normal prostate and also in BPH. In fact, there are prostatitis that would have higher F SUV than prostate cancer. But the uh, GLUT transporters in well-differentiated prostate cancer are decreased and would increase in increasing Gleason score. Aside from that, there's also the urinary bladder excretion, uh, the urinary excretion of FDG tracer. So it limits our uh, interpretation. That's why, uh, well, the question is, should you let go then of PET? So image that you see is a maximum intensity projection of two consecutive FDG PET done on a prostate cancer patient, revealing unremarkable or normal findings. The reason for the, sens the limited sensitivity of um, FDG paved the way for uh, new tracers. So in 2016, we had a fluorocholine or fluoromethyl f -choline PET, and it exploits the, the fact that in prostate, prostate cancer induces cell membrane synthesis. There is um, increased choline transporters 
incorporating choline for phosphatidylcholine, which is a part of cell membrane. And what is its use? Well, for detection of, uh, well, for the primary disease, it has limitations in the localized can prostate cancer because it cannot also differentiate prostatitis and or BPH. And it is inferior to MRI in terms of extraprostatic involvement. Whereas for lymph node metastasis, it has um, more use for dependent on the size. For five millimeters and above, it has a sensitivity of 45% and specificity of 96% in a high prostate cancer grade. Whereas for bone metastasis, it was found to be better than bone scan with higher sensitivity and specificity. How about for biochemical recurrence? This um, study by Panario showed that um, in, a hundred, in a study of 118 patients, it's more useful for those with a um, PSA level of four. And uh, it had a detection rate of 85 over 118 or 73%. And it can be uh, another study showed that it may be useful for PSA levels of more than two. And that uh, uh, F-choline is better than CT4M staging or metastasis staging. And MRI is still for local recurrence and nodal metastasis. For our experience, we also found that majority of those who tested positive for F-choline PET, as you can see, are um, fall under the range of a trigger PSA level of four and above. Whereas there, was, there were two patients who had positive results for PSA levels of less than 0.5. So all in all, a 66% detection rate. I, I excluded those with indication for screening or initial staging, only for biochemical recurrence and restaging. And uh, it has even a negative PET result with a PSA level of 21.9. So I will give about four sample cases of f PET in our institution. This patient, um, the Gleason score is unknown because the surgery was done by another doctor. So he under, underwent radical prostatectomy with nodal dissection and radiotherapy and is maintained on leuporolelin and presenting with an elevated PSA level. So MIP here was unremarkable save for a lesion that you see on the skull, right skull for that matter. So an extra axial mass on the right frontal convexity the patient underwent excision of a said tumor and it showed to be a uh, metastasis. So just to show you, the patient happened to have a PET scan, I mean, FDG PET scan, and you see it was unremarkable. So this is the utility of f codeine PET, but with uh, elevated PSA of 17. Another case, uh, the patient underwent f codeine PET for screening no biopsy was done, but there was just a palpable nodule on rectal exam. And the f pent did not really give any um, benefit. It's, we uh, just interpreted it as non-specific uptake in the left lateral uh, prostate. And we advise also ultrasound or MRI. Another patient, a patient had um, radical prostatectomy and is maintained on a baratarone. And... I would like to highlight this is one of the two patients who had a positive f PET with a low PSA score. So this patient had a 0.4 PSA, and we the PET showed a mild uptake in the left external iliac node, which was actually 1 cm in size. So a month afterwards, um, ultrasound was done, was done, which showed um, enlarged lymph node. So the patient was co-managed with an oncologist given docetaxel. Another case of f PET, which was done for initial staging, patient had a recent score of seven and a PSA of 6.8. Actually bone scan was, the image was corrupted, so I could not show it, but it had a um, skull and L5, L, S1 uptake, and we interpreted it as equivocal. So this f PET showed that it was unremarkable save for, I mean, no bone lesions rather, it ruled out metastasis in the bone scan. And it has just a mild uptake in the prostate bed. So we exclude metastasis. The patient was given 
brachytherapy and the PSA is now 0.07. So as you recall, the PSA that is usually more than four, it's a trigger level for f PET by chemical recurrence indication. So that's why I would like to talk about prostate-specific membrane antigen or PSMA. It's actually a type two transmembrane protein. It's actually a misnomer because it is found in four organs as well, the salivary glands, the proximal tubules of the kidneys, the jejunal brush border of the small bowel, and also the sympathetic ganglia. However, it is the best established target antigen in prostate cancer, and is upregulated in all stages of prostate cancer, especially uh, when it undergoes the differentiation metastasis, and it's when it becomes hormone refractory. So uh, you, you see the image on the right, Oh, for the above, that's the mechanism of why there is an uptake in PSMA PET image. The, it's actually the PSMA receptor in the luminal or apical side of the membrane that accounts for the prostate cancer uptake in PET. Whereas on the bottom right, the PSMA endothelial expression accounting for new vascularization is the result why there is an uptake in non-prostatic um, tissue. Like if you see, um, if by any chance you see a PSMA PET reading with uptake in the thyroid or in the adrenal because some adenomas, um, actually other non-prostatic carcinomas are, as well would increase or show rather uptake on PET because of this mechanism, the PSMA endothelial expression in the knee vascularization. So you may think that why you're talking about PSMA, um, NCCN guidelines promote uh, or recommend rather flucicovin um, for recurrence, whereas the European Association of Urology advocate PSMA. So I would like to highlight this prospective study, head-to-head -head comparison between the two, flocicovin and gallium PSMA PET for biochemical recurrence. And it showed, it was published in The Lancet last year, and it showed higher detection rates for PSMA PET versus that of flocicovin as you can see on the left bar. And you can see also for pelvic lymph nodes, the uh, flocicovin showed only four, whereas PSMA PET showed 15. And on the far right, for any extra pelvic lesion, flocicovin PET did not show any lesion, whereas gallium PET showed eight lesions. So I'd like to highlight that. Um, that's why there is actually a trend in the US for, although it is FDA, F so Flucicovin is FDA approved. Once PSMA PET is approved, then there's a trend going to PSMA PET as um, told to me by uh, nuclear medicine in the US and studies as well. The next is that how about comparing uh, PSMA PET with bone scan and CT and MRI? So you can see here the table showing um, higher sensitivity and specificity for um, PSMA PET detecting pelvic nodal disease, whereas CT and MR just showed sensitivity and specificity of uh, sensitivity rather of the 39 and 42 percent, respectively. So for bone metastasis, gallium PET also has higher sensitivity at 96 percent and higher specificity rather at 99 percent compared to that of bone scan. And on the, for a non-metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer, there was a retrospective study of 200 patients among those with a recent score of eight and above, PSA doubling time of less than 10 months, and also negative for nodal metastasis on MRI and CT. And they showed that 98% of their patients, of their scans, showed positive PSMA PET so that's 196 out of 200. And these non metastatic classic resistant prostate cancer patients had a stage migration into M1, more than uh, half or 55% of that number. And that is a meta-analysis and retrospective study. How about a prospective study? There is the pro-PSMA, which is a prospective randomized controlled study of PSMA PET for those high-risk cancer prostate, high-risk prostate cancer patients, before they went, before they were given curative intense surgery 
or radiotherapy. And as you can see here, the results showed higher sensitivity detection rate for PSMA PET for, um, for the high-risk patients, higher in numbers in the area under the curve, and also higher sens sensitivity and specificity. So you remember the trigger PSA level of um, f codeine with 4 and above. How about that of PSMA PET? It's also the same. Uh, we have, um, it's also dependent on PSMA level, but at a lower level, we have more higher sensitivity for PSMA PET, even um, less than, even to point, even as low as 0.2 with 86% in a study by Rebar, and also a retrospective study by GSEL on the, sec on the third column showed higher sensitivity and specificity at uh, both uh, less than 0.5 and 0.1. And these are, um, if, you, if you think this is familiar, I also presented this is in the previous uh, PSEO convention. That is for F18 PSMA. For gallium PSMA, there was this meta-analysis of a large number of patients' scans showing lower sensitivity and specificity of 75% for less than two PSA levels and 95% for two and above. These are retrospective and meta-analysis, and these are separate studies comparing the two. So that's why I would like to highlight um, a perspective head-to-head -head comparison between the two kinds of PSMA PET, the F18 and the gallium PSMA PET. So this is an example in the, of the results published in Journal of Nuclear Medicine, and it showed actually um, perfect concordance between the two meaning lesions seen in one was also seen in the other. However, for F18 PSMA PET, there were um, four patients who had additional lesions seen on the prostate. As you can see in the um, arrow above, so the one on the left arrow, there was additional uh, milder uptake of FPSMA. And these uptakes in uh, PET, um, so these patients underwent um, surgery and histopathology showed um, out of the four, three were positive for prostate cancer and one showed prostatitis. So the study said that um, they're both comparable, but um, F18 PSMA may have more lesions, but of limited or uh, limited significance. So I'm actually half through my lecture, so please bear with me. Um, the next is our experience at and KTI, actually, we also have higher number of prostate cancer patients testing positive in PET, PCMA PET, with a trigger PSA level of four, as you can see in this table. Um, but in the previous, in the f experience, we had a lower detection rate with 66%. Here, our detection rate is higher with 85%. And for the PSA levels less than four, as you can see in the table, we have a higher uh, detection rate at 31%, whereas for f codeine we had uh, about 12% PSA detection, I mean, PSMA PET positive for less than four. So our study, our experience showed that PSMA PET was even positive with a lower PSA level. And uh, it was negative at a PSA level of 5.5. .5. How about the head-to-head -head comparison between Afcolin PET and PSMA PET. So this study is um, showcased 40 biochemical response patients who underwent radical therapy and PSA of two and below. And 70% of the scans showed FPSMA upgraded f results, showing more lesions and less equivocal lesions and generally higher uptake, higher SUV. So in short, uh, PSMA PET will have higher detection rates. And as you can see in the previous studies, at a lower PSA level. So I will next show about five sample F PSMA PET cases. Actually, this one was um, F codeine uh, patient was sent for F codeine PET for screening. No biopsy was done, but PSA was elevated as you can see here, and the MIP showed um, widespread bone metastasis. Also, the patient had lymph node metastasis, 
and the patient was given, underwent TERP, was given abiraterone and denusumab. And then P PSA was now 0 0.09. So PSA may pet was unremarkable. And as you can see in the axial slices that the lesions in the colleen pet uh, were not or have resolved. And so the utility of FPSMA pet here is showing good response to treatment. Another case is that of um, this patient who presents with a PSA of nine and proven prostate cancer. And uh, MIP showed on the right, shows um, uptake in the right pelvic region, also um, increased uptake in the prostate and with lymph node metastasis. Mind you, the lymph nodes on the right pelvis are normal sized. So if the patient has undergone, had undergone CT, then th this may be undetected because they're of normal in uh, size. So this PSMA PET shows the extent of disease. Another case is this patient is actually a 40 year old patient who um, had a PSA level of 0 0.359. So at the low PSA level, uh, the patient has a decent score of 10, who underwent biopsy and chemotherapy eight cycles. With a PSA of 0 0.359, the MIP here shows uptake um, several foci and uh, extra axial lesion in the brain, as well as in the left scapular blade with a supraspinatus muscle soft tissue involvement. And actually, the patient had a um, CT scan about a month or two beforehand, which was unremarkable, CT scan of the brain, which was unremarkable. And uh, CT scan of the chest and the abdomen showed multiple blastic metastasis, so from head um, and the visualized skeleton. So you can see here that the visualized skeletal metastasis did actually did not have any uptake. So therefore, um, these are not active prostate cancer lesions. So it showed good response in terms of the bone metastasis, save for the one in the left scapula, as you can see in the image on the right. So for that patient, um, a PSA may pet was able to detect um, disease response, which was poor at a low PSA level. This patient had a Gleason score of eight, underwent radical prostatectomy and radiotherapy, and it had a PSA of 62. So initial PET at that time was f uh, MIP here showed uh, multiple metastasis and skeleton and lymph nodes. And here you can see the lymph node actually has a um, lower uptake, but it's enlarged, a mild uptake rather. So, patient was given 10 cycles of docetaxel and the PSA is now 19. So now PSMA PET was done instead of F-choline and showed progression of the multiple skeletal metastasis. But this axial slice that you can see showed um, smaller size, the diminution of the size of the lymph node metastasis, vertebral lymph node metastasis. Patient was then given enzalutamide and zoledronic acid. And you can see on the MIP, there's still progression of a widespread bone metastasis and maybe even a marrow uptake as you can see in the MIP. On top of that, there was also liver lesions. So having given docetaxel, this, oh, okay, this patient also had an elevated PSA of 214. So patient was actually planned uh, to be given by the oncologist with cabazitaxel. However, the patient um, had COVID and expired, and so was not able to. This, this highlights the poor response, the, P, the utility of PSMA PET for um, treatment response. This is my last sample patient case. It shows um, the patient had um, uptake in the bone scan at the T7. So bone scan is highly sensitive, but poorly not that specific because this uptake in the T7 lesion could actually be um, wedge fractures would have uptake, degenerative changes, osteomyelitis, hemangioma would also have changes, um, uptake like this in bone scan. So we um, recommended um, 
PSMA PET, but um, additional scans. So PSMA PET was done confirming the T7 lesion with a sclerotis on the CT aspect and increased uptake on the PSMA PET. And on top of that, there was also uptake in the prostate and the rate, right prostate base, as well as lesion in the lymph node metastasis. So this highlights um, the disease extent of the patient and also confirms equivocal bone scan findings. Okay, what are the PSMA PET indications then? The indications for PSMA PET are the following for initial staging of high risk prostate cancer, for biochemical recurrence, for therapy monitoring, as well as for um, therapy selection for lutetium and also for Yes, for the lutetium therapy. It is actually um, one of the third line of treat options for treatment. If this image is familiar because it has been presented two years ago and it won the image of the year in Society of Nuclear Medicine in the US and it showed um, eight patients with high gallium PSMA PET before and resolution of their lesions after lutetium treatment work was given. And it actually, the, this is a study by Dr. Michael Hoffman, and they showed a 64% uh, PSA response rate of 50 and above, as you can see in the blue bars. And you might think that, well, 64% is quite high, whereas the study of HEC showed about 32%, and with more sample cases, like 100 patients, and that of Rabar will be 45. So. Dr. Mike Hoffman um, said that this may be due, due to good patient or rather optimal patient selection. Uh, they had uh, imaging exclusion criteria, and there was, this was in fact um, in another study that those who were excluded, um, the reasons for exclusion are those with low or no PSMA expression on FPSMA PET, I mean, gallium PSMA PET, and they also had discordance with FTG AVID um, PET. So in order to elucidate, I'll just give this sample patient wherein the image on the left shows widespread bone metastasis in the PSMA PET. Whereas the one in the middle, uh, FDG PET was done, showed also metastasis. The ones on the blue are the PSMA, the ones on the red are that of FDG uptake. So the ones in the red are the lesions which uh, lutetium therapy cannot reach. So the axial slices, you could say it's actually a flip-flop phenomenon with uptake, as you can see, in the right supraclavicular lymph node in FDG, but with the uptake in the left supraclavicular lymph node for PSMA PET, and also multiple visceral metastasis in the liver for FDG PET. And so Dr. Michael Hoffman's team said that um, they excluded these kind of patients, the ones on the left. And also PSMA PET on the left showed um, decreased uptake of PSMA. In fact, their criteria should be at least SUV of 1.5 and above compared to the liver. So a few more remaining slides feature that, you may, that may interest you for um, nuclear medicine on prostate cancer. Their team um, in Australia, Peter McCallum, Dr. Michael Hoffman, would start this early next year. Um, this is a technician PSMA guided, radio guided surgery. And they studied about a retrospective study of 200 patients, um, sorry, 31 patients. For biochemical recurrence, patients, um, gallium, PET positive lesions for biochemical recurrence patients were imaged. And then um, these patients underwent salvage surgery with the use of technician PSMA radio guided uh, probe. So technician PSMA was injected to these patients and then spec was done. And then there was um, salvage therapy. And the end point the, was the radioactive rating of these um, histopathology specimens when they used the technician PCMA probe. And it showed that when they compared those that rated positive or negative for recurrence via the probe, 
And then when they underwent the histopathology, it showed a higher sensitivity and specificity, 83% sensitivity, 100% specificity, and 93% accuracy. Moreover, through this uh, technician PCMA probe, they were able to de detect additional metastasis as small as three millimeters in two patients. So this is more for those uh, surgeons who would want to do salvage treatment, uh, surgery rather, for uh, biochemical recurrence, um, high-risk patient. The next is, uh, you heard about lutetium therapy. There, there are ongoing trials to combine lutetium and alpha therapy. So it, the concept here is increased sensitization for, of the prostate cancer cells. And there is a um, multi-center in nine countries about 750 patients for the vision trial, this may interest oncologists, that uh, there is a double arm study combining lutetium with the best standard of care versus patients with just best standard of care. And there's also a double arm study of therapy trial for those um, metastatic gastric resistant prostate cancer who progress after docetaxel they were randomized whether lutetium or cabazitaxel, and they already have 200 patients. And the others are actually single arm trials, except for the last. We have the PRINCE trial, which um, actually it's double arm, lutetium therapy, uh, sorry, single arm lutetium therapy with prombolizumab. The others will be lutetium therapy with olaparib, and for the upfront PSMA trial, they would want to, isn't it a lutetium therapy as a third line or the last resort, they would like to move it earlier. And for NZP trial, the combination of lutetium and enzalutamide with that group of just enzalutamide alone. So there was initial results presented this year in the ASCO, American Society of Clinical Oncology, um, showing that uh, there's a 29% more PSA 50 reduction rate level of that of lutetium PSMA patients compared to those who were just who were given cabazitaxel. So th these were um, the sample size was 200. And so my takeaway message would be for a PSMA pet, it has revolutionized prostate cancer imaging. And it can be used for initial imaging for high-risk prostate cancer, for biochemical recurrence, and lutetium therapy selection. And it has replaced efconine PET. And for selective patients, you may still use FDG PET, more for those what you consider for lutetium therapy. And theranostics is one of the third-line options. And with this, may nuclear medicine doctors be included as part of the MDT? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Gomez. That was a very uh, comprehensive lecture. And I just learned that uh, F18 SME PET is comparable or non inferior, maybe. It's not more accurate than calcium PET. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the price, it's more uh, than 50% less, I believe. 